In this video, I'm going to show you how I created um, a fairly realistic brush animation. Uh, this brush animation was for a game um, produced by uh, the Game Show Network, whom I work for. And well, the game was a pyramid solitaire game. And um, what, the, uh, what we wanted to do was to have a, a brush literally come in and dust off the the backs of these playing cards to reveal their face values. And um, so they asked me to produce some sort of animation for the brush. And I thought, well, in, in my mind, I had an idea of what I wanted it to look like. And it, it had um, a lot of perspective uh, to it. So I thought, well, maybe this is something to create in a 3D program. But the more I thought about it, the more I, I wanted to attempt it in Flash. Um, if anything, to um, kind of challenge myself and maybe my own animation uh, prowess, so to speak. So I came up with uh, what, I, what I ended up doing was using um, a technique that I've used before um, that was featured in, in How to Cheat in Flash, uh, where I, I create the illusion of a woman's face turning in space by using um, strokes and lines and, and having each segment of the stroke on a different layer and, and then using shape tweens. Well, I, I used a little bit of that in this technique, and I'm going to show you how. But let me actually go to the final uh, look of this animation. So if I just play this, uh, you can see it's a pretty cool um, stylized, but yet um, with enough realism to uh, make for a convincing uh, brush animation. I saved everything into scenes just so you can see the process. Um, and then this, uh, the dust that was added afterwards, I'll get to in a minute, but that was all hand-drawn. Um, in fact, just about everything was hand-drawn, layer for layer. So let me actually break it down for you. So the very first thing I did is just used uh, the brush tool and painted uh, or basically sketched the, uh, the idea of this brush. Um, because I, to be honest, I wasn't sure if I was actually going to pull this off uh, from the very get-go. Um, but I figured, let me start off with an animatic, um, a sketch version of, of what I think this brush is going to look like. Uh, so I was pretty happy with this. It was rough, but it was a start. So the next step, make sure you can see all these layers, was to create this effect. And how I did this, I'm going to actually create a new file just to show you. How I did this was to grab the line tool. Actually, let me just grab the brush tool and sketch out. Uh, that's pretty good. Let me just sketch out, uh, let's say, this, this shape, just to get something there. OK, and then let's say over the course of uh, whatever, 20 frames, I want to have this shape turn in space and, and move something like this. to go from here to there, kind of rotate and pivot a little bit. So what I did was create a new layer. Let's lock this and convert it to outlines just so it's not uh, too distracting. Uh, I'm going to take the, actually, let's take the rectangle tool. We can use red for this, and we do not want a fill tool. I'm just going to create this uh, rectangle with outlines only. And then use the selection tool. I mean, push and pull it into basically the shape we want. And now I'm going to create a keyframe on that last frame. Free transform tool, let's position it here roughly and then use the selection tool to tweak it. Okay, so we have the basic movement. Okay, we can try and shape tween this. Okay. Create shape tween. I'm just right clicking, and we get the idea is there for the most part. So that's kind of how I, I approach this. But if I make um, turn off some layers and turn them on individually, the reason why I put each of these segments on different layers is just so I could easily shape tween them, as you can see here. So here's the box what I just showed you in that previous file that I just created. Using using shape tweens and a couple of more. 
You can see that segment is there on that layer. until I had this. And this is when I started to realize that I think I can probably pull this animation off. And at this point, I didn't even worry about the bristles of the brush. I wasn't sure exactly how I was going to pull that off at this point. But um, for me, when I'm doing animations like this, and, I'm, and they're somewhat challenging, that uh, I don't, I try to tackle each hurdle one at a time. All right, so scene three, this is where I converted all those shape tweens to keyframes and there's a reason for this because I want to eventually fill all these shapes in uh, with color and shading and things like that and I need to have every single one of these strokes on the same layer so in preparation for that let me go back to the previous scene all I did was select everything and hit F6 and that turned uh, that can that converted everything to a keyframe for me as you can see here and then I just went back in and removed the shape tweens so now what uh, you need to also uh, download is Merge Layers. Um, and I've also included it in, um, as part of the, uh, the downloads for, uh, for the book for How to Cheat in Flash. So you probably have this um, extension already. So you want to make sure you install it and restart Flash. Um, so it, once you do that, you can literally merge all these layers by running the command. And there you see, it's worked, it's, and it's uh, a huge time saver. So let me go to the next scene, which is essentially everything merged and flattened into one layer. And then I could, uh, what I did was just mix some colors and started filling in for every frame. And you can even see here this plane, I mixed a slightly darker shade of color. So as it rotates in space, it gets a little bit darker. And now at this point, I can just double click all these strokes and I can start deleting them. And I do that for every frame until it looks like this. And then I replaced um, a couple of these um, planes of just solid color uh, with just a slight gradient just to give it a, a, just a little bit more realism. And then the next stage here, I went so far as to add a bit of a drop shadow, or not so much a drop shadow, just a casted shadow um, of the actual handle. You can see that. I just manually added that in. And all that is, if I zoom in, all that is is a shape. If I select the color, you can see it's just a linear gradient uh, with black um, mixed with uh, some alpha brought down to 75% and another color mixed all the way down to so that's completely transparent and laid that into the shape as a fill color. On the next layer below it is just a texture that I drew. And just to provide again a little bit more realism to the brush, to the handle of the brush. Now I had to tackle the next and pretty much the final uh, challenge um, for the brush itself which was creating the bristles and again I, I didn't want to overthink it I didn't want to have to draw every single bristle at all so I like to start with simple shapes which is what I did we convert that to outlines you can see all I did was create a shape with this color gradient so you open up the color panel again you can see the gradient I created just to give it a little bit of depth the biggest challenge wasn't so much creating um, the actual bristles themselves, but timing the bristles. Um, because if you were, uh, if you did have a, a, a like a small broom or um, something like this brush in hand, and you were wiping something away with it, you, it, it's tricky to get the feeling that the bristles are reacting to the handle and not the opposite. So that's, that's what I tried to do. So once I had this animation, again, I flattened, uh, converted it to uh, keyframes. And what I did was I went in and, and basically suggested bristles. And how I did that was, let's see if I wanted to create another 
bristle shape. We're using the uh, selection tool. I would go in and literally select just a little section like this and hit the delete key. And then I would use the same tool and push and pull some of these points. And do that over the course of three or four frames. Again, just this, just the, just suggesting bristles. And as the animation continues, they get a little bit smaller and they actually disappear completely. So you only see the bristles when they're sort of flared out at their uh, at the most at their most extreme, I would say, like that. So it's more of a suggestion. So when, when it's actually playing, you barely can see them, but they're there. And it's just, again, the suggestion of bristles was all this really needed. And then the final step was to add the dust, as you see here. And that was just hand-drawn. That just took a little bit of practice. But the one thing I've learned about studying dust and particle effects like this is I, all I did was take this color, Again, let me just convert everything else to outlines just for the sake of illustration here. Um, and I would draw, create a new layer. So the process would be to, with pressure sensitivity and a fairly large brush, is to draw the actual dust shape, create a blank keyframe and turn on onion skin so I can see my previous frame and draw the, the dust coming out away from the, bristle, the bristles of the brush. And the trick to this is at some point the, the dust itself starts to dissipate. It starts to get a little smaller, starts to break up. And at the, also the outer edge, or the leading edge of the dust, starts to slow down, while the uh, trailing edge kind of catches up with itself. And ultimately, with a smaller brush, I can add a little bit more detail as the dust breaks up and eventually just disappears. So you get the idea. And so I did one side of the animation and then copied and pasted it to create the other side of, of the dust as you see here and staggered it. Much like the walk cycle video where I, I, did, I animated one leg and then duplicated all those frames and copied them and pasted them and then staggered them. So uh, same kind of technique here. Until ultimately, I had the brush effect, as you see here, and it was it's used in the in the game currently, and um, it, it's a neat effect. It's really fun to see it. Uh, it really adds a little extra dimension to the game. Um, so I hope this helps.